here and we will get started. Hi everybody, welcome to this English lesson about the country of Canada. Uh, I just want to say hi to everybody who is here and hi to people who are watching this on replay. Today I'm going to do uh, a little lesson about the country of Canada for you. Uh, many of you in the past weeks have asked me uh, to do a lesson uh, about the country of Canada. So I thought I should do one. I got my hockey helmet on uh, to protect my head just in case. I don't think I'm gonna wear my hockey helmet for the entire the country of Canada uh, the entire time because it's a little bit warm right now to be wearing it. But thank you for being here. I have my uh, hockey helmet on. I have my hockey stick um, and I even found my skates. So, you know, there's this funny thing that people think that all Canadians play hockey and that all Canadians know how to skate. And I would say that that is somewhat true. I mean, we don't all know how to play hockey or how to skate, but uh, when I was young, I definitely played a lot of hockey. Uh, this is actually my son's helmet. It's not my helmet. Um, and this is actually my hockey stick. This is my own hockey stick um, that I do use. Uh, normally it has tape on it, but I haven't been playing for a while. Um, and as a good Canadian, these, these are actually my skates. These are the skates I wear um, when I go skating. So anyways, welcome again. Let me put those down. Welcome again to this English lesson on the country of Canada. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to all of the people who are here, especially to all of the people who have joined my channel and become members, uh, just to thank me. Uh, thank you so much, all of you whose names are in green in the chat. Thank you for becoming members and helping to support me. But let's get started. Um, let's learn English topic Canada. I did do a video about the country of Canada uh, a few months ago. Um, I'll put a link below for that video. Uh, I think most of you watched it, um, but uh, I do want to spend a little more time talking about this country because many of you have asked for me to do that. Um, so the very first thing uh, that we like to talk about when we talk about Canada uh, is to make sure that we honor and respect our First Nations people. Um, so the First Nations people or the Aboriginals are the people who were in Canada before Europeans arrived and started to settle here. So um, many times in Canada when we have a formal ceremony, uh, when we open a new library, um, when we open a new government building, we often will invite someone from our First Nations community who we respect greatly uh, and they will come and they will speak at that opening. When we opened our local library, we had a member of our First Nations community come and to just kind of open the ceremony for us. So um, originally hundreds of years of uh, hundreds of years ago. Um, the only people who were here were our First Nations people. Um, so there's two words in English. You can call them First Nations in Canada. I think that's a term unique to Canada, or you can uh, refer to them as Aboriginals. And uh, I highly recommend that if you visit Canada, that you explore and honor the, uh, the culture and the history of our First Nations people, because it's just awesome. So anyways, uh, First Nations is the first thing I want to mention. Second thing I want to mention is that I am going to talk a little bit about the history of Canada, so hopefully that doesn't uh, bore you too much. Just about five minutes of history. Um, but I wanted to mention that we have two official languages in Canada. So we have the language of English, which you are learning, but we also have French as a, uh, an official language. Not all Canadians are bilingual. When you are bilingual, you speak two languages. Um, many Canadians speak either English with a little bit of French, or they speak French with a little bit of English. Um, and then some Canadians are actually bilingual, but we are a bilingual country. Most of our French speaking citizens live in the province <clears throat> of Quebec. Okay, so this is Canada this province here. Uh, we don't have states in Canada. We have provinces. The provinces, province of Quebec is where you will find most of our French speaking citizens, although there are French speaking people in every province of Canada. Okay, even in Ontario where I live, there is a, a fairly large French speaking community close to where I live uh, in a city close to where I live. Um, so uh, we're a bilingual country. 
we speak French and we speak English. Um, let me just back up for a sec to tell all the people who are here, welcome to this English lesson about the country of Canada. Um, I'm not going to, I don't know why I keep, this is what, when you play hockey, you're like, ah, and then you're ready to go. It's a, it's a rough sport. Um, that's why I keep hitting my head. Um, welcome to this lesson about the country of Canada. Uh, if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and please use the chat uh, for conversations in English between each other. If you have questions, please use the form that either Todd or Dave or Nightbot will link in the chat uh, and I will get to those questions momentarily as we go through this lesson. Uh, last thing before I go, I do want to mention again that if you do want to support my channel, you can click uh, the join button below. There is no requirement to do that, but it is appreciated, those of you that help me out just a little bit. Um, should I look at the questions now? Yes, because there's lots of them. So Valerie has the first question. Now Valerie, I edited your question a bit because I, I don't like to give out too much information, but Valerie just says, hello Bob, it seems that there is a good place for rest close to your farm, a park, have you ever been there? Yes, there is a park close to my farm uh, because I live on the river. If you go down the river a ways, you will find a park. Unfortunately, the park is closed right now because of COVID-19. So many of our open spaces are actually closed right now. But it's a great question, Valerie, because it brings up the point that Canada has a lot of parks. We have a lot of conservation areas. That's a place where we try to keep things natural. We have a lot of parks in Canada as well. And there is definitely a park close to me. Um, and it's... There's two meanings of the word park in Canada. You can have a park in a city where you go with your kids to play. Uh, and I'm going to take the helmet off, okay? <laughs> uh, and you can have a park where you can go to camp. So there's two kinds of parks when you're talking about, when you're talking in English. Um, let's see here. Um, Vitaly Smirnov says, hello, teacher Bob. How are you doing in the second largest country in the world? What's your favorite Canadian city dish and book? Tell us about Tuni and Looney. So I'm going to jump ahead uh, to one of my later pieces of paper uh, just because I, I'm going to mention that Canada is the second largest country in the world after Russia. Um, and often my Russian students like to remind me that uh, Russia is bigger than Canada. So very cool. Here you see Canada and here you see Russia. I'm not sure I got the sizes exactly right, but this is Canada and this is Russia. Um, I apologize once again that the papers are in black and white. I currently cannot go and print them in color, so we'll just have to live with that. Let me do a couple more questions. Let's see here. Gaga says, sorry Vitaly, uh, my favorite city is Toronto. My favorite dish is still pizza. Not actually a Canadian dish, but that's what I like to eat. Gaga says, hi Mr. Bob. And then a picture of a sunflower, very nice. The other Canadians who speak English when they come to Quebec City seem to be foreigners. I mean, some of them can speak two languages, but some cannot. So many English speaking Canadians visit Quebec City. That is the capital city of Quebec. I think it's the capital city. I'm pretty sure it's the capital city. That's where their government is. Um, yes, that's the capital city. Um, but many English speaking Canadians can't speak French. So they do seem a little bit like tourists, even though they're in their own country. Quebec City also has a lot of Americans who visit it, Gaga. So you, if you were visiting there, let's see. Um, again, I will skip questions. Um, that are not about the topic of Canada. Um, I want to say uh, welcome to Yasser for joining the channel. Thank you for joining and supporting me. Yasser, that's awesome. Um, Intandui Lestari says, what is your opinion about the Badlands and the Royal Tyro Museum in Alberta, Canada? Thanks, happy Easter and stay safe. So I have never been to the province of Alberta, okay? Um, so that's one thing that I would like to do someday. I live in the province of Ontario. I have never been to the province of Alberta. I would love to go. Um, so I'm not familiar with those other than pictures and I think that they are probably both uh, great places to visit someday. I look forward to the day when I can travel and maybe I can go and visit those countries. Um, 
Last question and we'll get back to the lesson. Uh, Sebastian says, hi, teacher Bob. How does health insurance work in Canada? Do you have to pay it by your own or does your employer have to pay half of it? Thank you. So we pay taxes to our government the tax money that we pay, a portion of that money is for healthcare. So if I go to the doctor or I go to the hospital in Canada, it doesn't cost me any money, but I do pay a lot of tax. When, I, when, I, when you work, um, you pay income tax on the money you make when you work. You pay sales tax on the money when you buy something, there's sales tax. All of that money goes to the government and that tax money is used to fund it's used to pay the expenses of our healthcare. So technically, uh, healthcare is free in Canada. So we talked about the uh, First Nations people. Um, one of the first um, visitors to Canada were the Vikings. So if you're not familiar who the Vikings are, many, many, many years ago, um, the Northern European countries, um, uh, like Denmark, um, there were people called the Vikings and they went to places like Iceland, and Greenland and eventually they did make their way to Canada but they did not end up settling here permanently they had some settlements I think that they used for fishing and they usually returned home I don't know a lot so if you're not familiar with of details about the Vikings but they were the first Europeans to visit um, and then we had this is where Lolly Lolly might be happy then France or the French this is a fleur-de-lis. This is the symbol of the province of Quebec. But in history, the next people to visit were the French. So um, France sent explorers out and France actually settled what eventually became Canada. So the first Europeans to actually permanently settle in Canada were the French. It was not called Canada at that time. Um, then something weird happened. Uh, the United States, which is south of us, um, decided that they didn't want to be part of Great Britain. So they, the 13 colonies uh, in the United States declared independence. What that caused is English people who lived in the United States decided to move to Canada. So we had a huge influx of people that you would call loyalists, people who were loyal to England, uh, came to Canada. And then there was a lot of controversy and there was actually one war between the United States and what eventually became Canada in 1812. The United States attacked us and uh, we successfully, with of course the British, because we were a British colony, uh, we successfully defended our border. So as much as, hey, learn English with this guy. I live in Maine, about two hours from Canada. Thank you so much for letting it, for the super chat, learn American English. It's interesting. Um, so the learn American English guy in 1812, we would have been enemies, but now Canada and the United States have a great friendship between each other. We have the longest undefended border in the world, to my knowledge, and many people who live in Canada uh, and many people who live in the United States uh, freely cross the border when there's no COVID-19. Um, sorry, the history part of this is almost over. I hope I'm not too boring. In July, of 1867 Canada became a country okay so we had confederation uh, and we became uh, a country so July 1st 1867 Canada was born every year on July 1st we celebrate Canada Day that is a holiday in Canada on July 1st we celebrate Canada Day that is the day that we became a country I should answer some questions shouldn't I let me get over to the questions let's see um, um, next question is from Grace Zed. Hi Bob, I'm an old fan. I know this question isn't really about Canada, but my question is how old do you need to be to watch your videos and can kids watch them? So I make sure that all my videos are safe for all ages, okay? So I don't teach bad words on my channel. Um, so in my opinion, I try to make my videos so that they are safe for kids, safe for teachers to use in school. So in my opinion, um, you have nothing to worry about if you have kids watching my channel. 
Next question. Chico says, hi, teacher. Can people in Canada keep working when they are retired? And do the old people get money from the government? So yes, when you retire, you can keep working. Or sorry, when you are of retirement age, you may choose to keep working. And when you turn 65, you get a pension from the government, okay? So yes, there is a pension in Canada, the Canada Pension Plan and it is used to give money to people who are 65 or older. There is another pension that kicks in at 67. Um, next question from Daniel from Czech. Dear Bob, thank you for your very useful lessons. Do you watch the Canadian ice hockey national team? Have you seen them battling against the Czech Republic? Thanks. So when the Olympics are happening, when the Winter Olympics are happening, um, that is when I watch hockey. I don't watch a lot of hockey normally, <laughs> but when the Olympics are on, I usually watch because I like to cheer on the Canadian men's team and the Canadian women's team. Um, Olympic hockey is very exciting for me, but normally um, I don't watch a lot of hockey. I don't watch the National Hockey League very often. Esther says, I watch a TV show, How I Met Your Mother. The role who named, oh, the role played by the person who is Robin. She's from Canada. She said, Canadians celebrate Thanksgiving in October. Is that true? Yes. So our Thanksgiving is in October. The American Thanksgiving is in November. So yes, yeah, slightly different dates. Um... Next question, Sherry says, hello, Mr. Bob, what is the strangest habit in Canada? Would you like to change it? Thanks. I don't know if we have a strange habit in Canada. Um, that I'll, if I think of one, I'll, I'll let you know, but right now I can't think of one. Um, so in the United States, the country is divided into states. In Canada, we are divided into provinces and territories, okay? So I'm quickly gonna name them. We have British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, the hardest one to pronounce, Manitoba, Ontario, where I live, Quebec, and then it's a little bit hard to see, but we have Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, that's where Sean from Free 99 English lives, uh, and we have Prince Edward Island, you can hardly see it, it's a little dot there, and then we have Newfoundland and Labrador, and then up here we have the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, these are our territories. So that's how Canada is divided. Um, and a few interesting things about Canada. We do say A, and we often say it at the end of our questions. So if you were to go outside today, if Jen and I went outside, I would probably say to her, oh, it's pretty cold, eh? Um, you, that's very <laughs> Canadian sounding, isn't it? It's pretty cold, eh? Um, that is a very typical thing to hear in Canada, um, people to say A at the end of their sentences, and it sounds exactly like how I just said it. It's pretty cold, eh? Um, and then we do pronounce things a little differently than our American cousins. Um, if I say the word about, it sounds different than how an American would say it. So a little bit of uh, interesting uh, differences between the US and Canada. Um, one of our national sports is hockey. Um, you will uh, know that you will notice that uh, there are many, many people in Canada that watch hockey. If you move to Canada, there is hockey night in Canada every week. There is hockey on television all the time in the winter. Uh, and Canadians, for the most part, not everyone, but Canadians do love their hockey. And someone asked earlier about the toonie and the loony. So you can see here, this is a loony, and you can see here, this is a toonie. These are our $1 and $2 coins. And I actually brought a couple. So the reason we call our loony a loony, let me get this in the screen, is because it has this little, I'm not sure that's focusing for you. It has this little loon on it. The bird on this coin is called a loon. Um, and so that's what that's why we call it a loony. Then a few years later, they decided we needed to have a two dollar coin, which we call a toonie, only because it's two dollars and it rhymed with loony. It just seemed like a really good name for it. Um, and then interesting, I'll show you something interesting about Canada. Let me find the paper for this it's somewhere else in this pile. Not sure where I put it. This lesson might go extra long today. There's a lot of papers left here. There's a lot of questions to answer. Oh, so 
Canada actually has the same queen as the United Kingdom. So um, we uh, have a queen. We have the same queen. It's Queen Elizabeth. She is definitely our queen. Um, there are many people in Canada that love the royal family. Um, and when any members of the royal family come to visit, it is a big deal. Excuse me. <clears throat> It is a big deal when the royal family visits. Um, my wife loves the royal family, by the way. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this now, this is Queen Elizabeth, by the way, is because our coins all have uh, Queen Elizabeth on the back. I'm not really sure if you can see that, but we have on the loony, the loon on the front, and then we have Queen Elizabeth on the back. So that's kind of a cool part of Canada. Um, and while I'm talking about that, I might as well talk about our money. So <laughs> here is a $5 bill in Canada. It is a very colorful bill. We do still use cash. Our $10 bill is purple. Or, uh, and our $20 bill is green. I don't have a $50 bill or a $100 bill, but uh, let me hold this up again for you. Um, so our money is very very colorful and it's also you can actually see through it I don't know if you realize that this is one of the security features of Canadian money so um, and you'll notice that uh, the Queen's also on the back of our $20 bill uh, and then on the back of uh, our $10 bill we have I'm pretty sure this is Sir Wilfrid Laurier can't always remember who everyone is one of these guys is yeah, I don't have my reading glasses on. I should know who's on our bills, and I don't. Um, so, Toonie Looney. Um, we also have, in Canada, this is called a toque. So, this, in most countries, is called a winter hat in English, uh, but we call this a toque. Um, it's kind of, I'm pretty sure it's a French word, um, but I don't think they use it in France. Maybe Lolly Lolly can tell us, but this, what I'm wearing right now, this winter hat is called a toque. So when you go outside on a winter day in Canada, you go and you find your toque, uh, and you put your toque on uh, to keep your head warm. Um, it's actually really cozy to wear a toque. Some people wear a toque. I think some people call it a beanie in some countries, um, but some people wear a toque all the time because it's very comfortable for them. But this is definitely called a toque. Um, I should do some questions. Let me do that for a sec. Um, next question. Alina says, hi, teacher Bob. Is there a supermarket chain called Whole Foods Market in Canada? I know there are plenty of them in the United States. Yes, in our larger cities, they are. They do have a store called Whole Foods. There isn't one close to me at all. Uh, next question from Manuel from Spain. Hi, Bob. What are Canadian games played in the school playgrounds? Uh, I'm intrigued because I've seen strange squares and circles. So I don't know the names of all the games, um, but they do play a game called Foursquare where you bounce the ball between squares. Um, and they do play a game. I'm trying to think. I'm not sure what game they would play in the circles, um, but certainly kids play tag. Tag is when one person is it, and that person has to try and touch someone else, and then that person is it, and the kids chase each other around. So uh, those are the only two I know uh, off the top of my head. Uh, let's see here. So uh, Anis from Algeria. Hello, Teacher Bob. Hello, Anis. Um, I hope you and your family are doing well. We are. Is Canada bigger than the USA? Thanks a lot. So our country is bigger in the sense that there is more land in Canada, but our country has less people. Okay, so there are only 37 million people in Canada. Um, let me find that uh, piece of paper for a sec for you guys. I should have had my papers laid out. So Canada has less people than the United States. We have 37 and a half million people. Um, so 37 million 500,000 people. Um, the United States has way more than that, almost 10 times more, I think eight or nine times more people than this. So um, we are definitely bigger in terms of the actual physical size of our country, but we have less people. Sorry, this is getting a little bit warm, so I gotta take it off. <laughs> I don't, should I put the helmet back on? Uh, maybe I'll do that later. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dimitri has the next question. Um, 
So Dimitro from Ukraine says, cool helmet. There are many Ukrainians in Canada. Do you meet or teach them? Do you like pierogi, which is a traditional Ukrainian food? I like them with cherries. Yes, I love pierogies. Um, I like mine just with some cheese and maybe a bit of bacon in them. Um, and have I do not teach anyone that I know of. No, I think I have one or two students who might have Ukrainian ancestors. Um, but I do live close to a large Ukrainian community and there is actually a Ukrainian community center uh, close to my house as well. So there are definitely Ukrainians in Canada, um, which I'm going to just bring up a side point. We talked about the French and the English coming to Canada. Um, Canada is populated by people from all countries in the world. So my parents came to Canada after World War II. Many people came to Canada after World War I. Many people came to Canada after the Korean War. Many people came to Canada after the Vietnam War. Um, many people come to Canada when there is conflict or problems in another part of the world. So we have, if again, I've mentioned this before, if you go to our larger cities, you will see people from every race and ethnic background. Canada is a multicultural country. And the way we refer to it is, um, like my parents came from Holland, so they referred to themselves as Dutch Canadians. Um, we have French Canadians, Spanish Canadians, Dutch Canadians, uh, Vietnamese Canadians, we have uh, Chinese Canadians. So when you come to Canada, you keep part of your original culture. You're not forced to become Canadian and give up the foods you love and the cultural practices that you have. You are not required to give up your religion. Canada is a welcoming multicultural country. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, but yes, after the English came and then the French, then many, many other people from different parts of the world came as well. Um, Rus Ruslan from Russia. Hello, Teacher Bob. Your lessons always make me feel good. Well, you're welcome. Uh, do you have studded tires for cars in Canada? In the far north, people sometimes have studded tires. That's for driving on snow or ice. There's actually, in the car tires, there's metal. Um, and uh, they more common, though, I think, is to put chains on your tires in the north. In my part of Canada, we do not do that. We do not put chains on our tires or use studs. Um, it's not that cold here in the winter. Um, which brings me to another thing about Canada, is that we have winter. <laughs> so we are a northern country, but where we live and where most Canadians live, we experience all four seasons. Um, so we have winter, we have spring, we have summer, and we have fall. Um, in Canada, it is very, very nice because you get to experience all four seasons. Um, if you live in British Columbia on the West Coast, if you live in the southern part of British Columbia, you don't get a harsh winter. But most parts of Canada, you will get snow, you will get ice, you will get freezing temperatures uh, every winter. Very, very common in my part of Canada, as you have seen in some of my videos. Hey, a few more things about Canada. Let me take a sip of water. Sometimes in my videos you hear uh, geese honking. So we have the Canada goose, um, or you can call them Canadian geese. Um, there are a lot of different names for them, but this is a very common animal in Canada. You will even see them in some of our cities. Um, and yeah, I made a whole video about Canadian goose or the Canada goose once. You could watch that. The leader of our country is Justin Trudeau. He's currently growing a little bit of a beard. I think he looks quite dashing with a beard, um, but Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, this is Prime Minister Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, he is the leader of our country. We don't have a president, we have a Prime Minister, and he leads Parliament in the capital city of Ottawa. I'm just gonna find the Parliament building here for a sec, which I can't find. Well, I think maybe I lost that one. I had a picture of Ottawa and our parliament building. The leader of a province is called a premier. So this is Premier Doug Ford. Um, so Doug Ford is the current premier of Ontario. Um, so we have a leader of the country called a prime minister and each province has a leader as well. Um, 
I'm not going to talk too much about this, but our flag is red normally. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a maple leaf in the middle. We have a lot of maple trees in Canada, and so um, the flag has the maple leaf on it. That is our flag. Um, I, th I think you can find maple trees almost in every person's yard in Canada. We have several maple trees on our farm. It is a very, very common uh, tree in Canada. Um, Sorry, I'm a little mixed up now, but Canada is a democracy. That means that we vote for our officials and leaders. So every um, three to four to five years, there is an election uh, and we will go and vote. We vote separately for the federal government. So we vote separately in the federal election and then we have a provincial election as well. So we are a democracy. We vote for our leader. Um, Oh, here's Ottawa. <laughs> I found it. So this is Parliament. Uh, these are our Parliament buildings in Ottawa, our capital city. This is where Prime Minister Trudeau meets with all of the uh, government officials. When there's no COVID-19, they meet here. Right now, they uh, meet occasionally. Um, but uh, this is Ottawa. Hey, I see in the chat, I don't normally answer a question, but uh, the question is, is it true that the, that Queen Elizabeth II is also the Queen of Canada? Yes, she is our Queen. She has no ruling authority or power. We are a sovereign nation. That means our government is in charge of our country, but we still honor and respect the Queen as the Queen of our country as well. Um, let me check for questions for a sec. Let me get over there. Oh, let me pause though and say thanks so much uh, for uh, asking great questions. Uh, give me a like if this video is helping you learn some English and a little bit more about Canada. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button over there. Uh, and if you do want to thank me for my work, um, don't hesitate to click the join button. I do appreciate all members of the channel. It's awesome. There's no requirement to join the channel, but if you want to thank me for the work I do, I do appreciate it. Let me get to the next question. Let's see here. Um, oh yes, here we go. So I don't know the answer to this question, Lolly Lolly. Bonjour Bob le Canadien. What is the difference in function between provinces and federal territories. Merci beaucoup. So my understanding is that provinces have an elected government and premier um, and they rule under the Articles of Confederate. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. You're going to have to look it up. Uh, there is a small difference though uh, and I don't want to get it wrong uh, when I'm doing the video because then the Canadians who know history well might come and tell me I said it wrong. But there's a slight difference in how they get their power to rule over their citizens. Um, let's see here. Um, next question. Caro from Germany. Hi, Bob. Are there any typical Canadian Easter traditions? Happy Easter. So Easter is a holiday that's being celebrated today uh, and Sunday. Um, so the general population, um, the non-religious population, has a long weekend. So today is a holiday. Uh, and the weekend, um, Saturday's not, but today and Sunday are definitely holidays. Um, many people get together with their families. Um, if you are someone from a religious community, though, you might be celebrating Good Friday today. So um, that is, uh, it's an official holiday in Canada, um, and uh, it's celebrated in a number of ways. Um, a lot of people would be going to church this morning um, or on Sunday morning, but right now we are not allowed um, in Canada to have religious gatherings. So Gregory has the next question. Hi, Bob. How many languages? Oh, how I'm just fixing the question. How many languages do students in Canada learn at school? So um, they study English, even if they're a native English speaker, um, but it's more like literature. And they also study French a little bit. Like my kids have French twice a week, I think for about 25 minutes. So they learn some of, they learn how to say, you know, uh, things like bonjour, comment ça va. They learn some of the basic vocabulary. They learn their colors and uh, they learn um, enough to get by in Quebec if they visited that province. Um, let's see here. Um, so again, I am skipping questions um, that aren't related to Canada. So if I don't 
get to your question. It might have been off topic, we would call it. So, uh, Lily from Vietnam, do students in Canada have to study online in this period of time and how long does the online studying last for a day? So yes, currently I'm a teacher. I, I sit right there to do my teaching um, and my kids who are home with us as well um, are studying online. So from about eight in the morning till one or two in the afternoon, my, my kids are all learning at home. So they're spending between three hours and six hours a day learning from home right now. So uh, let's see here. So Mona had a geographical question. Mona says, hi, Bob, I hope you are safe. Could you tell us where Canada is located? What country is it bordered on? Thanks in advance. So Canada has the longest coastline in the world, I think, we're going to have to talk to my Russian uh, viewers about that. Um, and our neighbor is the United States. So we are um, north of the United States. In fact, I did have a map here. I can't find it back quickly. Um, and we are located uh, basically in the northern hemisphere. So uh, if you go uh, to the east, you will hit the Atlantic Ocean. If you go to the west, you will hit the Pacific Ocean. We're kind of between those. And if you go north, you'll get to the Arctic Ocean. Um, next question. Raphael says, hi, Bob, I'm from Brazil. I would like to know what sport is the most popular in Canada? Definitely hockey, I think, is the most popular. Although baseball is popular, football is popular. Soccer is not as popular as all of <laughs> all of your countries. Um, I know soccer is a, a hugely popular poor, uh, sport in the world. Um, and uh, that, uh, uh, sorry, soccer or football is hugely popular, but in Canada, it's a little less so. Um, hey, something else unique to Canada. Um, we have normal police officers, but we also have what we call the Mounties, and I wish this was in color. The Mounties are the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. A long time ago, they did ride horses. They still do have some horses, um, but they drive cars now 99% <laughs> of the time. Um, but the RCMP, RCMP, that is our federal police force. So the Mounties or the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, um, operate in all provinces of Canada, okay? And they do things like investigate crime uh, and do what normal police officers do. They don't all wear this outfit to work every day, by the way, but this is kind of the more formal uh, outfit that the RCMP officers would wear. Uh, our armed forces, we have an army, a navy, and an air force. I think I said Navy funny there. We have an Army, a Navy, and an Air Force. Uh, Army is on the ground, Navy is in the ocean, Air Force is in the air. We also have a Coast Guard, so I forgot to mention that. Uh, major cities, hopefully I don't offend anybody. Uh, Toronto or Toronto. Notice I said it slowly, Toronto or Toronto. Toronto is how most people say, oh, I'm going to Toronto to see a show. Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. Toronto is in Ontario, Montreal is in Quebec, Vancouver is in British Columbia, Edmonton and Calgary are in the province of Alberta. So those are our major cities. Um, again, if you live in a big city in Canada and it's not on this list, I apologize. Um, we have a lot of trees <laughs> in Canada. Um, all kinds of trees. In fact, we um, have a lot of lumber in Canada. We uh, harvest trees and turn the trees into lumber. That's wood that you use to build a house. So Canada has a ton of trees. Um, we have hardwood and softwood. And as I said, we have a lot of maple trees and we use those to make maple syrup. Um, I recommended this in my other video about Canada as well. If you have not tried maple syrup, you should try maple syrup. It is yummy. Um, one of our common uh, dishes in Canada is poutine. So poutine is uh, French fries with gravy and cheese curds. It's very, very tasty. Hey, um, as promised, I'm just gonna do a little uh, switch here. Just give me a second. Um, at this point in the live stream, I'm gonna switch the chat to members only uh, and members of the channel uh, can ask questions directly in the chat. 
let me make sure that happened yes so I am going to keep going but if you are a member of the channel first of all thank you for joining uh, and if you have any questions about the lesson ask it directly in the chat and I will be happy to answer it I am going uh, I am going to continue answering questions as well Val Vitaly says Putin answering probably a question about the leader of Russia Isabel Lopez says hello I would like to know how many time zones does Canada have oh I don't know British Columbia is three hours different from us and I think Newfoundland is half an hour difference but I'm not sure that still happens um, so I think we have three or four but I don't know for sure Isabel sorry about that uh, Zarni says hi Bob I heard you added one hour to your original time in a video how does Canada's time zones work it's almost the same question that's a cool coincidence um, Alinas has given me a super chat now I know much more about Canada thanks a lot oh that's awesome thank you uh, Vitaly says great lesson thank you Bob no problem I am not done yet though gonna keep going again if you have questions ask them straight in the chat lolly lolly says i don't have any questions strange that's no problem lolly you might think of one um, but let's get on to the next question and it is nanny says there's any big differences between canadian english and american english that you can tell thank you so much bob the best canadian um, so there are slight differences but what I usually say is that Canadian English and American English are very close cousins, okay? We say some words slightly differently, um, like the word about, um, and Canadians, when they go to America or when they go to the United States, we do have a bit of an accent. They think our accent's cute, but we think they have a bit of an accent as well. But again, I went to university in the United States and I had no problem studying there. Uh, Vitaly says, Vitaly Smirnov, nine time zones in Russia. That, your country is big, Vitaly. It is a big country. Alina says, could you please tell us what do you like the most about your neighborhood? I like it that it's really quiet. I live in a fairly remote area. I live out in the countryside. I like it that there are lots of birds and I like it that um, it's, it's just quiet. Um, when I'm in the big city, uh, I feel... Uh, I get anxious. I have some anxiety. Uh, Olga Celik says, or Celik says, Hi, Teacher Bob. Do you think Canada will be using its own digital currency such as Bitcoin? I don't know what will happen with digital currency. I don't think there is any plan right now to have a Canadian cryptocurrency or digital currency. Um, but who knows? We'll see what the future holds. Uh, let me get to the next questions here. Alex. Alex says, do Canadians basically drink coffee or tea? Canadians drink a lot of coffee. One of our most popular coffee shops is called Tim Hortons. Um, and when life is normal, if you go to a Tim Hortons in the morning, there will be huge lineups for the drive through for people to buy coffee. That being said, a lot of Canadians do drink tea. Um, when I was growing up, we drank, as a family, we drank tea. We had tea every afternoon. We had a cup of tea. Jen's parents still regularly drink tea as well. But I would say I think the most popular um, drink in Canada is coffee, but I would need to check that out. Um, let me go to the next question here. Again from Fadia, a question about Canadian and American English. So when we speak, we have slightly different accents, but we watch all of our television or most of our television comes from the United States. So Canadians have a very, um, a very American type accent. Um, it is unique to Canada, but our accent is somewhat American sounding. Uh, let's see here. Olga has the next question, and the question is, Bob, um, what are the best things to do in Canada? Well, definitely go outside and see nature. We have beautiful trees, beautiful lakes, beautiful mountains. Um, Batali backing up says, now you've been a French, English, and history teacher. Yeah, that's, that's true. I've done all of it. Isabel Lopez says, what's the part of Canada that have more nature, and which part it's more citadine? So the best, in my opinion, northern Quebec, 
and Alberta and British Columbia have some of the most beautiful places to visit in Canada. Um, in Alberta and British Columbia, there are mountains and trees. It's just gorgeous. I have been to British Columbia. Um, and when I lived in Quebec, I made a trip to Northern Quebec. It is a beautiful province, very, very beautiful. Um, let's see here, Alina says, nice, I wish I lived in a quiet neighborhood. Mine is really busy and hectic. Yes, when I lived in the city, I loved a lot of the, of the city. I loved a lot of the parts of it. I liked that you could order pizza. Um, and get it delivered. I can't order pizza here. Uh, when I lived in Quebec City, because I lived in Quebec when I was a lot younger, um, I liked that you could walk to a cafe. I liked that you could go to the park. Um, where I live, you can't do that. You have to drive to do that. So uh, it is nice to be able to do those things. Um, let's see. Uh, next question is from Michalio. Is it true that in some parts of Canada, water as part of utilities is free, this caused by a large number of lakes. So to my knowledge, most people who live in the city in Canada do pay for their water and you also pay for your sewage. So when you flush your toilet, the water that goes down the sink needs to go back out of the house. In some cities, you don't pay for your water I think you pay for how much sewage or wastewater comes out because that's kind of an indicator of how much you used. Um, so Vitaly says, do you call Canadian Indians as native Canadians? Saskatchewan, is it an Indian name? So I believe Saskatchewan is originally uh, an Indian name. The term Indian is an official name, but it's not widely used. So the most common term in Canada is First Nations. So if you drive uh, from my house to the east, wait, let me get my direction, to the west, you will come to, um, there's a huge area close to me where there are just many, many First Nations people that live. So we would, I think the most common term is First Nations. So Indian as a term was used in the 70s and 80s, uh, and it is part of Canadian law, like, um, but it's not a common name to use to refer to people who are First Nations. So, um, and I think that came about a few years ago when a number of First Nations leaders um, said that their preferred uh, term to use is First Nations. It's a cool term. I love the, the name First Nations. Uh, let's see here. Sam has the next question. Sam says, hello, teacher Bob. Sam from Taiwan. Do most students apply for a school loan for their tuition in Canada or parents would pay for them? So you can get student loans in Canada from the government. Um, sometimes you can get a grant from the government. That's money that you don't have to pay back. Um, but usually in Canada, people get a student loan from the government and then they usually ask their parents to pay for university a little bit. Um, and it's kind of split between the parents and the government. Hey, I'm just gonna flip chat back on for all of you who love chatting. Uh, thanks for the questions from the members only in the chat. That was awesome of you. Um, so we'll go back uh, to full chat mode now. Um, and even though I usually end, I'm just going to do a few last things and answer a few questions. I have a little extra time today. Um, people say that Canadians are polite. I'm not sure if you can see this um, a little meme here. It says Canadian vandalism. Vandalism is when you spray paint on stuff, right? And you, you do something to, 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 uh, to mess something up. In Canada, it says thumbs up, have a nice day. So it's kind of a joke that Canadians are very polite. Um, we are in some ways known as really polite people, but we are just normal people. Um, we, we have our moments. That's a phrase in English that you would say, you know, we do get angry and we do get upset. I think in general, we try to be polite. Um, I think Prime Minister Trudeau said, Canadians are really polite until until we get on the ice. Let me get this on my head. So Canadians are really polite until we play hockey, <laughs> and, then, and then we're not. <laughs> you have to remember that we are a nation that was built on people who lived out in the woods chopping down trees. Um, that is how Canada started hundreds of years ago. Um, so we are a polite people, but when we play hockey, it's uh, we play to win, man. That's that's how we play that game. Wow, this helmet. <clears throat> My son's head must be smaller than mine. Uh, let me do a few more questions, people, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, let's see here. Um, Halim has the next question. 
And the question is, uh, to get a job in Canada, are there special requirements? As far as I know, each country has different requirements. So if you are a citizen in Canada, you are free to apply to any job for which you have the qualifications. If you have qualifications, it means that you have the education or the experience to do that job. Um, there are jobs where you don't need any qualifications. If I wanted to be um, a waiter in a restaurant, I could probably find a job. Um, uh, and uh, But if I wanted to be a doctor, I would obviously need to go to school. If you are from another country, uh, if you do a search for how to get a work permit to work in Canada on Google, you will end up on our government website and you will find information there on how to do that. Um, let's see here. Um, I think, yeah, let me, I'm just making sure I have Canadian questions here. Uh, Helene says, hello, Bob. What do you think of Winnipeg, the city in Manitoba? Is it safe here? I'm preparing for studying here. Thank you so much. Hope you and the family are well. Most Canadian cities are fairly safe, um, but like the rest of the world, there are parts of some cities that maybe you should not go to. Um, I have not been to Winnipeg, but it is supposed to be a very, very nice city. I think you will love it there. Uh, Winnipeg is great. I do hear though, there's lots of mosquitoes in the summer in Winnipeg. You'll have to uh, let me know. Mosquitoes are a small flying insect that when they land on you, they, they bite you. So hopefully there's not too many black flies or mosquitoes for you when you go there. Let's see here. Um, Ying has a question about Montreal. Do people in Montreal have French accents when they speak English? I'm thinking of having a two month study English trip in Montreal after the pandemic. The city of Montreal has a distinct English and French flavor, and it has a distinct English and French uh, citizenship. So you would simply, if you are going to Montreal to learn English, you will want to make sure that you spend as much time as you can around English speaking people in Montreal. The English speaking people in Montreal do not have a French accent, um, so you will be learning fairly good English. Although I do challenge you, if you go, you should spend some time with some of our French speaking citizens because all Canadians are awesome. Um, whether they speak English or French. Um, let's see here. Um, Genevelle Philo says, Hi, Bob, how's it going? Pretty good, Genevelle. Uh, a uh, little stuck at home, but um, definitely. Um, so Deke Shanch in the chat says, If I'm not wrong, Canada means village. There is a, a theory, and it's probably true, that our First Nations people had a word called Kanata, one of the uh, one of the First Nations people, um, and that might be where the name Canada came from. And I do think it meant village. I think you are correct, Deke Shanch. Um, hey folks, I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to wrap up this lesson. It's been a little over 45 minutes. I didn't get through all your questions. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching uh, this lesson about Canada. Um, I hope that you have a good day. Uh, I'm not going to go out and play hockey, but I thought it would be fun to put this back on. Um, so if you're wondering about my hockey stick, you can see that it's curved because I shoot left. So in Canada, uh, you either hold your hockey stick so that you shoot left or you hold it so you shoot right. So if I was playing hockey with people, they would ask me if I shoot left or shoot right. Some of my Russian viewers will understand that or from Northern Europe. Um, and I'm not gonna go skating today. Um, there's just uh, no ice to skate on outside and the arenas are closed. Vitaly, thank you so much for the super chat there. Uh, says, looking forward to the next lesson, next topic. I don't have a topic yet. I'll think of something this week. If you have an idea, uh, leave me a message in the comments below. Anyways, please like this video. Please subscribe if you are not a subscriber so that you get notified uh, when new lessons come out. Um, I hope that you have a really good Friday today. Uh, I hope you have a good weekend ahead of you. Um, and again, thank you to all of the people who are members of the channel. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, and uh, I will have another video out for you on Tuesday. Oh, and we're going to do a live stream tomorrow, of course, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we will do an open question live stream tomorrow. I will not wear a helmet. Um, although this, this really protects your head, doesn't it? I mean, if I fell and bonked my head, do you know that word? In English, when you hit your head, we use the word bonk. You say, oh, I bonked my head. 
This sounds kind of funny. I bonked my head. So to be clear, if I hit my head against the wall, I would say I bonked my head. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you tomorrow in the next live stream. Have a great day. And uh, let me see if I can find the, the button. There's the button. 